Greetings and welcome back to yet another episode of the Daily Run and today we're playing as Isaac. Isaac is one of those characters that's kind of reliant on RNG maybe more than any other character and it really comes up to the personal decisions that you make throughout the run so which items are you going to reroll and which ones you are not and just kind of making that mundane choice that sometimes seems very obvious can end up making a big impact on your run and it really depends on just what your strategy is. So for example my strategy is to try to reroll as many devil deals as possible because I think the devil deal item pool is one of, one of those that's going to make you the strongest. And whenever I play my dailies my kind of overall strategy is to be as strong as possible so then I can hopefully explore as many rooms as possible and I think that also gives you the advantage of getting just as much consumables as you can possibly get in that run. But some people might prefer going for the shop because the shop has a bunch of items that work well with the D6. So something like the battery, the 9 volt or maybe Sag boy, Because those items allow you to kind of reroll more often or maybe kind of optimize your rerolls in a way that I wouldn't do it just because I'm not really going for the shop items. And I don't think any of those strategies is a bad strategy or maybe one of them has more benefits than the other. But at the same time just depending on how you play the game will end up resulting in a vastly different run and I'm not just meaning that it's going to be a different run as in I'm gonna get a certain item and you're not gonna get a certain item and even that would be in some situations quite extreme so imagine if, it, if I get a brimstone and someone doesn't obviously I have a big advantage here but even more than that it can have a bigger impact just because the whole run is different so basically not only one item but basically every item for a certain point on it will end up being different for someone who's picking up those certain items and that's just because uh, you can end up rerolling certain items and the other person might not end up rerolling those items so even though they are seeded and you theoretically have the same chances of getting them um, it, it would it would make a big difference on just maybe even in which rooms you the order of the rooms you visit because in some situations maybe you could afford to reroll a certain item twice but if you go in a wrong direction you can only reroll it once maybe and that adds a big discrepancy to the quality of the runs that people have and that is kind of exemplified or maybe boosted by the fact that we also found the rune room and the rune room has five rooms and if you want to kind of optimize or maybe be as efficient as possible it would be that we would optimally use four runes on this floor and then take one rune with us to the next floor so what I do is actually I take the Yara rune which is maybe a bit unprecedented because some people might keep the Yara rune in hopes of getting a blank card because the blank card can then allow them to break the game just get a lot of consumable points but some people like me I opted to take the Perter rune because I think I can use the Perter rune in combination with my D6 to actually reroll a devil deal maybe on one of the later floors and get a really really strong item so I think both like I said both of the strategies I think are fine in, in the sense that they, they're both kind of planning for the future and one of them is hoping to get a certain item and in my in my case I'm just hoping that I would get a strong item that I can use so but the question here is that do these things really kind of are important because do they make a big difference enough that it's worth worrying about and I think it's not really because at the end of the day it's not just about which decisions you make obviously whenever you're playing this run you're trying to go for the biggest score and the more runs or more dailies you play, the more apparent it is who, which are the players who are making the right decisions. And on average you'll, you're going to see that, okay, maybe taking this rune in this scenario is going to be better, and or, or maybe taking this rune in this scenario is going to be better. So I just found a strategy that kind of works for me, that kind of ma makes me feel like I'm doing well, especially on this daily run. And I'm kind of sticking with that and I think that's that's important and and to maybe realize when that strategy isn't going to work and maybe change your plans so what I'm trying to say is basically I don't think it's worth worrying about on how you're playing your dailies maybe you don't worry as much about which items you pick up which items you roll which runes you kind of take just because it makes like I said it does make a big difference in the end and I, I understand it's upsetting whenever you pick up an item that results in you having a really bad run when you see that someone else rerolled a certain item and they got the super strong one and they just kind of demolish everything and it's basically just due to luck and not a skill but I'm saying if you have a good strategy and you play a lot on average you are going to perform better than that player if they're actually worse than you so like I said I don't think it's worth worrying about but if you play maybe 100 maybe 200 300 runs and you s still see yourself being behind at that point I would start thinking maybe my strategy isn't working but just in a vacuum whenever you see someone doing better just because there's a weird decision that was made in, in a run somewhere I think it's worth worrying about and ever since I kind of stopped 
thinking of my runs as just being this contained thing where I'm trying to do my best and I'm not really going out of my way to try to break them, I think I'm having just a bunch more fun with the game. And this is special apparent whenever you play the game for a long time and you start only worry about a certain thing. So in this case you only worry about getting the maximum score. Getting the maximum score, well that's the point of the daily run. I think I shouldn't forget that it's also about the fun and it's it's about just healthy competition between us. We're trying to learn from each other as much as possible by talking, seeing what other people do and kind of trying to improve on our game based on that. And I think that's the real value of this competition and not, not as much as just... Um, just getting the highest score because I think that that would be a bit boring sometimes so but what happened while I'm harping on about it there's been a lot of things going on so what happened in the first floor I did decide to use my arrow rune in the shop my thinking at that time was I would really need a key for the next floor and I, I don't have it yet and there's really little chance of me well there's a chance of me getting it I think there's a guarantee chance of me getting it in the shop so I take the arrow rune I go in the shop I see that there's a key and then I duplicate it but what also happened, there was a card there that actually was the Joker card. And the Joker card then teleported me to the Devil Deal, which is on the first floor whenever you get the Devil Deal, you know that things are gonna get a bit different than what you can expect. So because I took the Devil Deal item, it was the Abaddon and the, the, the Flying item, which gives you periodical shields. They're, they're both very good items, so of course I'm not gonna pass them up. But what happened is the second floor had Krampus, but because I took the devil deal on the first floor, my devil deals were kind of guaranteed, but whoever didn't find that second secret room and then used the Jero in the shop, which I think is a very small subset of people, just because a lot of people don't even search for secret rooms on the first floor, and then of course a lot of people just wouldn't use the Jero rune in the first shop, because keeping that Jero rune is very important if you want to break the game via the blank card. Um, so I, I got then the guaranteed devil deal and a lot of people who didn't do that didn't so when they fought Krampus they actually got a lot of angel rooms which and then this run turned out to be an angel room run just because like I said they didn't have that guaranteed deal with the devil so they were kind of having to do with the d6 and rolling angel rooms and that's not as bad whenever you have an angel room item or I mean the angel room run whenever you have the d6 it's not that bad because you can always fight the angel and when you beat it he, he will drop the key piece and then you can reroll the key piece in order to get two items and usually it will result in you eventually getting a very strong run but at the same time because I made that decision and I used my rules well I was actually able to get brimstone here so it's kinda iffy you know anyway thankfully in this scenario or in this daily both runs were equally strong I would say so they were strong they both resulted in very strong runs but in but we just how it turned out you know it could be that this run or my, my decisions that I made would be better and people who didn't find that weird combo or maybe made those weird decisions first floor would have a very weak run and, and that's what I was talking about you know that's a bummer but I think like I said on average whenever you play as many runs as possible um, these things kind of start exemplifying and they make bi um, a bigger of a difference than what it seems at this point and I think it averages out on the long run and you can really see and kind of compare yourself so sometimes like I said it's going to work out and sometimes it's not going to work out but I'm thankful that I, I can actually make this statement now just because or maybe like I said I just feel this way because this run went well but at the same time uh, I think it's a good point to be made that we shouldn't really worry too much about the score, we should try our best, but not at the point where we're kind of killing our enjoyment of the game. So what happened here is I got the anti-gravity, and anti-gravity with brimstone is not a great combo at all, but it's a fun synergy. So what happens is you pick up anti-gravity, your tear speed gets increased or your tear delay gets reduced, so that means you shoot faster, which was kind of problematic because I had no tears up at that point, I even got one tears down pill. So that was kind of unfortunate with Brimstone, I, I really had to press the button for a long time before charging it. So I think that's a good combo. But what happens is, you kind of spawn a Vortex at the position, it takes maybe 3 seconds and then it fires. So as you can see, that, that's what exactly what's happening. And in a big room like this, it's kind of hard to aim at enemies. Thankfully I got 4 Algis runes from just my room bag, so I was able to kind of use that invisibility to kind of stay on top of enemies and kill them. But overall, it, it's just a ve it's a very slow process to actually kill them this way. But like I said, it's fun. I think I, I shouldn't be kind of straying away from these fun synergies. Um, just because they're bad, maybe. But, you know, sometimes I'm going to take them because I think they're they're good. They're, they're good fun. And I think, like I said, it adds a variety to the run. So if it didn't take this, this would be just yet another Brimstone run. 
And I'm not against just having big brimstone runs, but I feel like we had a lot of them lately and just having one that is reliant on a, stra on, on a synergy that's not as good, but I think it's fun to look at, is, is a good change of pace to kind of re revit revitalize, rev revitalize, revitalize my, my passion for the game. And whenever something wacky like this happens, I think I really gain a new appreciation for the game, just because at this point, you know, you kind of throw everything, you know, out of the window, because it's not just about, you know, visiting as many rooms as possible in the minimum amount of time, it's also about kind of micromanaging your decisions at this point, so how are we going to place these vortex shots to kind of hit as many enemies as possible when they're moving around, or sometimes uh, when you have a bunch of enemies which are kind of rushing you down, you kind of have to place it in a way so they actually run into the vortex. So for example, have a lot of leeches and you have that eye laser in the middle, that eye laser is gonna keep shooting you and those leeches are gonna keep up kind of harassing you. And it's very hard to kind of dodge both the laser because in an optimal world, if you, if you just had brimstone, it would already be charged up, so we would just enter the room, unleash it, and just kill everything in the room. But with how these vortex, vortexes work, we kind of have to place it down. It takes about three seconds before it actually starts shooting. So it, it, it makes things kind of a bit different, and I think it really changes how you play the game. And whenever that happens, I think that that's a good thing. Uh, so what, what even better to kind of exemplify the synergy, we got triple shots, so... Now, instead of just having one brimstone laser, whenever we shoot, we get three brimstone lasers. I, I thought the, the, the charge time is going to be much, much longer, but for some reason it was actually... I, I felt it like it was about the same. And that's, I think, maybe because I, I got a, a bunch of tear-ups, and because the anti-gravity does reduce your tear delay, so it wasn't that noticeable. But in exchange for getting the triple shot, we got triple the damage, and Hush died really, really fast. So not only did the Vortex do the damage to him, because we had some inv inv invisibility going on, the triple Brimstone shots also did the damage to him. S so that was kind of a crazy synergy that I didn't really t think it would work out well. Like I said, I thought it was gonna take much longer to actually charge the laser and to unleash it, but it actually turned out to be as fast, I don't. I, I feel maybe if not even faster than what was before, which doesn't really make a lot of sense when you think about it, but that, that's just how it turned out. And the fact we also had the Proptosis, which is an item which increases the damage the closer the enemy is to your tier, and the farther away you go, the lower the damage of your tier is. We really benefited from having that shield because we could get really up in that face of Harsh and really just unleash just a bunch of damage on him. And whenever we shot our triple brimstone laser, we actually did about 10% of his health. So at this point, it's there's not really much we do. We try to go to the floor, get hit as, as rarely as possible, and hopefully find some spirit cards, because I would really like to use the sacrifice room in order to get teleported to the dark room. So even though I only got hit four times in this run, I was really proud of that, because um, whenever you're playing, even though this run was strong, I did take the anti-gravity, and that can make dodging a bit tricky, so the fact I only got hit three times, uh, I was really proud about that fact, basically. And it turned out pretty well, I, I think, even though, like I said, this synergy is very iffy sometimes. Um, but yeah, like, we are missing two spirit cards, and that was kind of a bummer. I would really enjoy or like to, to gain an extra one, but for some reason this floor just didn't, didn't g give us any. So I wasn't able to actually visit the sacrifice room and kind of sac kill myself over again to get teleported to the dark room, and that would of course give us just a bunch more points. But as it turned out, I was actually ranked 47th, and because I recorded this daily much later than usual, which is indicated by the fact that this is also uploaded, uploaded much later than usual, because I'm doing the commentary on the next day, um, we actually ranked out really, really well. So 47th, the fact we didn't get hit much, uh, basically contribute to the fact we were managing we managed to rank this well and also the fact of course that we just had a super strong run so 46,000 points on a run that goes to show i would say that's pretty good thank you guys so much for watching and i hope to see you next time